To work on the inverse of the function fg, we have redefined its domain to be one that is less than or equal to minus one. And according to what this question is trying to ask us in part five, we are supposed to then come up with the expression for the inverse of this function fg. And we're actually faced with a pretty unique situation, one that can actually potentially appear in quite a few schools, J1 and J2 end of year exam. And if I were to try to resolve this, if I were to try to find the inverse of this function using the usual process, we will run into some problem. And let me show you what this problem is. If I were to just go through the usual process by letting y be equal to fgx, which means that y is going to be equal to modulus of this, where x is less than or equal to minus one. In order for me to make x a subject, that means removing the modulus, it will give me plus or minus y. This is equal to x squared minus x minus two. And to make x a subject, I'm going to try to apply the quadratic formula. I'm going to bring y over to the other side. So this minus two plus or minus y, this is equal to zero. Applying the quadratic formula, we have a minus minus one plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac plus or minus y. This is going to be divided by two times of one. Can you see what is the problem that we are facing already? This is going to be equal to one plus or minus square root of, here we will have a nine plus or minus four y divided by two. We have an additional plus or minus to analyze. And this is not efficient to do in the exam. So how are we going to overcome this plus or minus, which was actually triggered by removal of the modulus. So we have algebraically this plus or minus to manage. A unique scenario. And let's try to overcome this before some of us face, face it you know, during our uh, promotion exam or prelim this year. So to manage this, let me show you a good process so that we can manage this this particular kind of expression with a modulus. We are still going to be letting y be equal to fgx. So y will equal, be equal to modulus of x squared minus x minus 2, where x is supposed to be less than or equal to minus 1. But instead of algebraically removing the modulus and adding a plus or minus y here, which was the reason why we had a problem just now, what we are going to do is to try to remove this modulus by referencing it to the graph. So if you were to look at fgx, where x is supposed to be less than or equal to minus 1, this was the graph that we have drawn previously, where x is supposed to be less than or equal to 0. But now we are working on the part where x is less than or equal to minus 1, which means that we are working on specifically this portion of the graph, where x is less than or equal to minus 1. So this is my new fgx. So for this part of the graph, algebraically, it can be represented by y is equal to this, where x is supposed to be less than or equal to minus one. But we do have an alternative. Let me show you how we can get this alternative to represent this portion of the graph. The alternative will be taking this, y is equal to modulus of x squared minus x minus two, and removing the modulus, we will actually have two possible expression. And by drawing the graph of the two possible expressions, one will be y is equal to positive x squared minus x minus two. The other one will be y is equal to negative of x squared minus x minus two. Then if I were to draw this graph, I'm gonna have a graph that is like this, where here is going to be equal to minus one. The other graph is going to be something that is like this, where here, is minus one. And if I were to now compare these two graph to what I have here, can you see that this portion of the graph, which is less than or equal to minus one, is actually this portion of the graph. And then where, where the part that is bigger than minus one, this portion of the graph, is actually this part of the graph. So it is the combination of this graph that gives me this, which then gives me an alternative expression to represent this portion of the graph and the representation of this instead of this can also be positive x squared minus x minus 2. So there are two ways that I can represent this part. One is y is equal to modulus of x squared minus x minus 2. The other one is y is equal to positive x squared minus x minus 2. And that gives me the alternative for here instead of subjecting myself to plus or minus y, I know it is going to be positive 
x squared minus x minus 2 since I'm working on the part where x is supposed to be less than or equal to minus 1 because x is less than or equal to minus 1. So I've decided that it is this. So now I can then make x a subject. I have this minus y, this is equal to 0. So x is going to be equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. And this is going to be divided by 2a, which is going to be equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 9 plus 4y divided by 2. This plus or minus is easier to decide since we have only 1 to decide. Just now we had 2. So this plus or minus, I am deciding based on the fact that x is supposed to be less than or equal to minus 1. So plus is definitely not the case because 1 plus something will not give me something that is less than minus 1. So I'm going to be choosing a 1 minus square root of 9 plus 4y divided by 2. And again, the same reason for me choosing this is because x is supposed to be a number that is less than minus 1. And only this expression instead of the plus version will give me an x that is less than minus 1. And therefore, now I know what is the inverse of fg. The expression will be equal to 1 minus square root of 9 plus 4x divided by 2. And the next thing that we can do is...